networking sessions are open and uh, I believe the legionnaires out there and everyone to be honest can become just better at the game guys you know participate in the training sessions as well because you guys get a better idea of the macro play style in planet side so it is also it is always useful to have everyone uh, just be in the training sessions so uh tonight guys the the session is going to be a little bit different from the other two days that we did so hopefully you guys participate in the other two uh we went over uh infantry in the first one on the two on the thursday then yesterday we went over armor and air tonight we're going to be talking about uh mostly how do you respond to an alert, where you should attack in an alert, where you should defend during an alert. Uh, so, as I said, it is going to be more leadership focus, uh, but it's still going to be useful for everyone, I believe. So, guys, uh, again, tonight's training, I want to make sure it's going to be, uh, in, instead of a class, we're going to make it more of a discussion here. Uh, because the topic in case here is not a practical one. Planet side is a very uh, it's a very complex game, and you are never going to face the same situation multiple times in a row. So we are going to give you guys tips, and I'm going to you know give you guys general uh, general ideas that are probably going to work for most case scenarios. But you guys are going to be out there, and uh, I can't give you guys an answer for every single situation that you guys are going to be facing. So I would like us to, you know, just have a conversation here about the topic. That way we can try to clear up a few questions that you guys may have and just discuss specific situations in general. Because, as I said, I can't give you guys the correct answer for every situation. Right? So everyone... Uh, Let's go ahead and open up your maps real quick. Uh, this is where we are going to spend most of our time uh, base training. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about the maps. And uh, I'm going to be referring you guys to a few documents that are also on our Discord uh, for you guys to go ahead and take a, a quick read at that first. But I'm going to go over a few things here uh, before we get started. So everyone, First of all, uh, you guys, as a platoon leader, the first thing you need to do is get acquainted with the map, right? So go to your map screen, everyone. You are all going to go through the map right now, and I'm going to teach you guys a few things. The first off is on the top right side of your screen. You're going to see that you have several options up here, and we're going to go over each and every one of them. First one is statistics. Uh, you can see the population on the continent that you are on. You can see the world population, the server-wide population. And the last one that you have is territory control. Now, territory control you can't see here. You guys can change to another continent. Let's go for Hossin, for example. And you can see the territory control there on Hossin that says 31% to VS, 32% to TR, and 35% to NC. That tab right there with the territory control on these statistics is a very, very important one. And as a platoon leader and also as a squad leader, I would highly recommend that you guys always keep your statistics on the territory control one. And the reason why is because, as some of you may already know, the alert bar, so every time you have an alert going on, you have that center bar that tells you the percentages for each of the factions territory. But that bar is bugged most of the time. So the, the percentage that's going to be showing in there, it's not going to be the correct one. And the only way for you to get the right uh, territory percentages is by looking at this statistics bar in here. So every time you guys are fighting an alert, never trust the center bar for the alert. Do not look at that You know, for you to make decisions. Always use the sidebar on the statistics here. Uh, so now the second one, guys, it's going to be the filters, and this basically, uh, you know, gives you, gives you several options for you to set up your map. You can use the grid, for example. I recommend you guys to use the grid. Uh, if you can, you know, get acquainted with it, because it's nice for you to identify stuff that are outside of the lattice. So it's not a bad idea to use the grid. Uh, I usually run with it from time to time. The only one that I would tell you guys to not use because it's useless is the Influence Cloud. The Influence Cloud just makes the map, you know, 
very bright and it doesn't work like it, it hasn't worked for a long long time so the the influence cloud is the only one that i would say don't use all the other ones are very useful you can mark stuff in and out uh the map gets a little bit you know saturated from time to time but it's it's still useful right now heat maps there's a, a small option out there for heat maps for you to see uh where the enemy is for you to see where yourself is and if you guys click on those ones uh, you can get a better idea of where the enemy is located if you do it right now on the Hossin map you can see that Nathan's defiance turns into a bright color that means that's where the, the highest amount of enemies is located and this can help you to identify where your enemy is like if you are having an, uh, an easy time in the alert or if you're having a hard time in the alert, you can go ahead, open up the influence, uh, the heat map with enemy activity and you can just go ahead and say, okay, yeah, we're being double teamed. There's no enemies between their lattices. They're all just fighting us. So you can, you know, use that as well to see it in a visual way instead of just mouse over each and every place that you want. Uh, then down below you have the legend uh, that's basically gonna give you an explanation of each base type that you have in the continent and uh, I want to bring your guys attention here specifically to the large outpost icon so you have warp gates amp stations stack plants bio labs then you have one that's called large outpost this one's gonna be a very important one guys we're gonna cover outpost bases uh you know the stronghold bases choke points in the continents here uh later so i want you guys to remember that icon right there uh up next we have this search function for the continent guys and if a few of you didn't know about this every time a platoon leader or every time anyone in command or anyone in general mentions a base to you guys as a new player and also as a casual player most time as a new platoon leader it's not your responsibility to know the, the maps you know like the palm of your hand you you are never going to know all the bases from all the maps i don't even know all the bases from all the maps so you can just type in whatever base you are looking for in here so if i say for example on the hossin map if we are going to go for Genodyne Holographics, you can just type in Genodyne and it's going to show you all the options that you have. And if you click on it, the map is going to take you directly into that base. So if you, you are being told to go to a base or you hear someone talking about a base and you don't know where it is, you can just type it in there and find that base very easily. Now, the other, the other one that we have here and the last thing on the map is going to be the tactical overlay. And this is basically a tool that you guys can use. Uh, you, you don't necessarily need to use. But using this, you can basically draw on the map. Uh, it, it can be used to high effectiveness uh, if you guys want to start doing it. Uh, you can't do it here on the VR training, but you can do it in any other continent as a platoon leader. And I also think the squad leaders can do it as well. So basically, you can pick, like, you can... Uh, put uh, you can draw on the map using a pencil or you can put a bunch of lines on the map uh, and you can basically for example if you are running armor you can plot your route before you leave with your armor uh, or something like that right so you can put the overlay in there and as soon as you have it you just click submit down on the commands you guys can see the commands there when you click submit it's going to show up on the map for your entire platoon to see right so that's the the map uh overlay right there for you guys i think that's a good explanation of everything we have in the map uh do you guys have any questions about the map for now anyone any questions I sounds good okay now guys we're gonna go ahead and uh now that we are done here with the introduction part we're just gonna go ahead and redeploy i want to get you guys over to hossin i think population is gonna allow us to go there that's another good example of how to use the statistics for you to see where you're gonna go so if you go over to hossin and you take a look at the world population it right now vr is at uh yes is at 33 percent but we might not be able to go uh, you guys tell me if you get stuck in queue uh, for Hassan and we're just going to go over to the off-continent. 
we are stuck in queue. Sorry, dumb question. Uh, I missed the last two training sessions. Where I can find that info? Yeah, all the training sessions are being recorded. They should be on the Discord. Uh, Horace, uh, Horace here, our Bravo lead, is you know doing the fantastic job of recording all of them for us. So you can find them being posted on the Discord. I'm probably going to get them pinned in one of our channels there. Uh, so if you want to find them, just join the Discord and ask. Sounds good? Yes, uh, what is the name of the Discord? Okay, yep, let me get the Discord link for you. Uh, Horace, can you get it for me? Uh, or s some of the other uh, Swarm Lords in here? And post it on Platoon Chat. So you can see the Discord. The Discord is going to be on Platoon Chat right there. From there, you're going to be able to just copy it and put it on uh, on your browser or your on your Discord. It should be very easy. There we go. So Discord link is right there. Looks like most of us managed to make our way here over to Hassan. Now, guys, uh, to start here, everyone, uh, before we go into more specific stuff, I'm just going to talk a little bit about overall strategy. So I'm going to give you guys some general tips uh, of stuff that you should and stuff that you should not do on any map during any alert. Uh, and these are going to, you know, hold on. They're going to be through in any scenario, right? So to start off, everyone, uh, hopefully you guys made your way here. We are looking at the Hossin map. Now, Hossin is one of the worst continents uh, lattice-wise. Uh, all of the lattices on Hossin are kind of screwed up. You know, it's it's one of the worst ones strategy-wise for you to play in because you have very little, uh, you have very few choke points. Hossin doesn't have any choke points, any places where you can hold off your lattice lines, uh, but there are a few. So the way planetside works guys is all of the continents are designed to have stronghold bases for every single one of the warp gates so every warp gate in all continents have choke points positions that should be kind of your front lines right so i'm going to give you guys an example here on hossin and i'm going to draw a line kind of where our front should be right so right here we have uh, right here we have up in the north our front line is gonna be our front line is gonna be on Hade Sky Dock. So Hade Sky Dock is our stronghold base all the way down to Woodman ASC and then down on the NC front is gonna be Bravada PMC. So I'm drawing a line for you guys here. Give me a second, let me see. Works. Okay. It should be there, then there, then there. So there you go. You guys tell me if you can see the yellow line right there. Can you all see it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So roughly around that area anybody should on, be uh, where... S in SKL, and, uh, sorry, anybody in SKL that's listening is not in here, a guys. platoon. I have a platoon up. We are currently trying to get the ascent early. Um, we could use your help. Yep, Complex was just getting an announcement out there, guys. So, roughly, this is a territory that the Eastern Warp Gate should hold here on Esamir, uh, on Hossin. And the same thing holds true for all the other ones. Now, these key bases that we're talking about here, the Stronghold bases, are going to be the main focus for any strategic platoon. So, if you guys are platoon leading and you want to hold important bases, here on Hossin for us right now, those would be both Hate Skydock and Bravada PMC. And you can see that those bases here on Hossin are, you know, directly in front of your enemy's stronghold. So the TR's strongholds would be Hatcher Air Station. So Hatcher Air Station is directly in front of Hate Skydock. That's Platoon Waypoint right now. And the other one on the NC front would be Fort Drexler. So that's on Platoon Waypoint right now. Now, what's so important about these stronghold bases? Each and every one of these large outpost facilities, and you guys can see that they have a different icon on them. If you get close, you can see that the, the little circle in the center has a different icon on the inside. Every single one of these bases are going to be a multiple point base. That means they have 
three points. They might even, at some cases, have four points on them. And what that means is if you are the defender and you're trying to hold on to one of those facilities, you can basically have your entire platoon focus on a single point. And if you focus on a single point, the cap timer turns from a four-minute timer into a 12-minute timer. It basically triples the time it takes for you to take one of those bases. And that usually should be enough time for you to have assistance, for you to have more population redeploy into that base, enough for you to kick the enemies out, or for you to have enough pop redeploy and help you out. And those extra eight minutes as well, if you are playing during an alert and you can get eight minutes out of the timer in any large base capture, that's very, very good for us. So that's why it's so important for you guys to try to hold on to those bases before the alert starts and during the alerts. You can give away any of the other bases for free, like you can go ahead and recap them later. But if you are losing one of these stronghold bases, you should try to throw your entire platoon, yell on command, try to get everyone in there, because you cannot lose those bases. These are the most important ones. So now, guys, we're going to take a quick look at the other continent here, uh, just to give you guys an idea of how the, these bases work in the other continents. We're going to start off with Amorish. So everyone, you're going for the Amorish map right now. Uh, we're going to start with our very own warp gate. We're talking about the southern warp gate right now. The bases that I'm going to be referring to are probably going to be out of play here, so they're not going to be inside the lattice. But remember, guys, you can still search for these bases uh, using the search function if you So right here on the southern warp gate, the stronghold bases are going to be split peak on the TR front. So in the eastern front, you're going to have Split Peak, it's directly north of Zealous Biolab. That is a four-point base. It's a very defendable position right there. It's very, very hard to take. And on the western front, on the NC side, it's going to be West Pass Watchtower. So West Pass Watchtower should be directly north of Wuku Amp Station. Command. You should be able to see it very easily. Guys, give me a give me a quick second here because I'm gonna mute command real quick. Oh, commands, command. Dang, you don't have a command. There we go. Wants to know. No, no, yeah, I doing? don't. We don't usually have command muted in here, Mike. We all use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice. Command is really nice on VS. <laughs> okay, so going back to Amrish, guys. As I said. West Pass Watchtower and Split Peak are going to be the southern uh, strongholds. So if you're holding the southern warp gate, you're going to want to hold West Pass and Split Peak. If you're holding the eastern one, in this case, it's going to be the TR uh, warp gate. So if you're holding on the TR warp gate, your strongholds are going to be uh, the NC Arsenal. So you're going to be fighting over the NC Arsenal. Uh, and also, you're going to be fighting for Split Peak. So Hoss Amrish just opened up. Now you guys can see here the you know the opened up uh, continent. And Amrish is interesting because the strongholds that you have on each side they're going to be contested territories. It's not like Hossin where each one of the factions get a stronghold on each side. Here on Amrish you have to fight for the strongholds. So you have. NC Arsenal between NC and TR, you have Split Peak between TR and VS, and you have West Pass Watchtower bef uh, between NC and VS. Right now, strategically speaking, VS is in a much, much better position over there on Amherst because we have control of two choke points. We have both West Pass and Split Peak, and those bases are very important. But right now, VS is in the better position here on Amherst. We would definitely, you know, have an advantage uh, in the map if an alert eventually came to Amrish right now. So there you go. You guys have the choke points on Amrish. We're going to mo move over to Endar real quick. And I think on Endar, you guys are going to know what the choke points are. They're very easy to identify. Uh, on the eastern side, on the eastern side, you have Hauling Pass and Crimson Bluff Tower. So those two are going to be the choke points on the eastern side. On the western side, you have Quartz Ridge and Inter Excavation, so Quartz Ridge and Excavation Site. 
And on the south, between the western and the eastern warp gate, you have both Regent Rock and Crossroads Watchtower. So those are the two bases that you guys should keep your eyes out. But I believe on, on Indar, you guys already know that those are the bases there. Everyone knows the important bases for Indar. And just, just real quick, before any questions here, guys, uh, just so I can finish all of them, we're going to go to Azimir, and Azimir is another one that's kind of fucked up right now. Uh, the, the lattices are, you know, masked up because of the containment sites. And Azimir does not have a lot of choke points uh, outside of the center. So on the sides, all your choke points, all your strongholds facilities are going to instead be the containment site. So you have Anvari containment site, Emir containment site, and Nani containment site. And around the center, your strongholds are going to be Syro, Matterson's Triumph, and Watterson's Redemption. So Syro Listening Post, Matterson's Triumph, and Watterson's Redemption are going to be the central bases. But the, the gameplay around Esamir rotates around holding the containment site. It's just as easy as that. During an alert, the faction that has control of two containment sites, if you manage to have two containment sites under your control, you are probably going to win the alert. Because you can use the containment sites as the choke points, and it's very hard to go around them. You cannot, it's very hard for you to back cap a containment site and cut it off. So, Azimir is more around containment. Now that we are done with the stronghold facilities for each continent, does anyone have any questions? Any questions, guys? Sounds good. No, no questions. Okay. Now, moving on, guys, to the next few tips here. And these ones are going to be, you know, useful in most situations, as I said in the beginning. Uh, we have a few things that you should always take into consideration whenever you are playing Planetside. Right? The first one uh, is how to manage a Zerg. So... The, the better way for you guys to deal with a Zerg is to prevent it. There is no easy way for you guys to break up a Zerg after a Zerg is made. And to explain to you guys in simple words, a Zerg is a term that's used to describe whenever you have a 96 plus, so you have a large amount of population that's going to be capturing a lattice line without redeploying. So here in Hossin, if we use a, a good example here, if you guys take a look at Nettlemeyer Gardens, if you guys take a look at Nettlemeyer Gardens right now, that is Platoon Waypoint, imagine that the NC redeploy a 96 plus to Nettlemeyer Garden, and they just keep going on that lattice line. So after Nettlemeyer, they go for the Ziggurat, then they go for Zot's Agriculture, then they go for Zot's uh, Arboreum, then Zot's North Garden, until they hit our warp gate on uh, Bridgewater Shipping Yard. Uh, so if that happens, if you have a large population running through a lattice without redeploying, that's what it's called a Zerg, right? And the best way for you guys to avoid creating a Zerg is to simply stay away from the enemy warp gate. It's as simple as that. Warp gating is a terrible thing to do strategic-wise. Uh, you should never warp gate any factions uh, usually the faction that warp gates someone ends up being completely double teamed by the end of an alert. So unless you are already in the final minutes of an alert, uh, try avoiding warp gating your enemy as much as you can. Like you guys should never do it under any circumstances. Unless like we're maybe doing an event or you guys are playing off hours and there's no resistance in the continent. Uh, if you want to be strategic sound, you, you should never go for the warp gates, right? That's the first tip right there on how to avoid creating a Zerg that's going to eat you up from the warp gate. Uh, the second tip is going to be to avoid the center of the map. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to give you guys a few examples here, right? We are going to take a quick look right now at Nason's Defiance, right? So everyone, Platoon Waypoint is actual. Take a, a quick look at that base. We could go ahead and take that base from the NC, right? We could redeploy, get our platoon there, and capture Nason's Defiance. However, if we did end up capturing Nason's, you guys, you guys can see that both the TR from Broken Veil on Alpha Squad Waypoint 
and also the NC on Gurney Dam, they would both have a connection to us. That means we could be attacked by both sides on that base. And by capturing, uh, by capturing this base, we would also sever the line that's between Broken Veil vale and Nason's Defiance. So you guys can see that lattice line right there, where I just put the, the arrow. That would stop existing. That means the NC and the TR would have one less territory to fight over each other. You are cutting off options for your enemies to fight between themselves, right? And that's going to be true for every single base that's central on the map. If we kept going, let's say we captured Nason's Defiance, and then we moved over to Gurney Dan, right? So we, we're done with Nason's Defiance, we moved over to Gurney Dan. Once again, we are severing another lattice between the NC and the TR on Huracan Secure Storage, right? So that's one less base that the TR and NC are going to be fighting over. So in general, uh, you should always try to go for the sides of the map. Try to stick to, you know, in our case here, the north side and the eastern side of the map. Because that way you're not going to stop fights from happening between the NC and the TR. Right now, you guys can see Woodman ASC, Platoon Waypoint right now. That base has four connections on the map. And right now, three of them are to enemy territories. Both NC and TR can have access to that base. It would be strategically wise for us to actually lose Woodman ASC. If the TR or the NC actually captured that base, that means they would have another lattice for them to fight between themselves. And that would give us another buffer because, you know, they have more options to fight between themselves. Right? So, in general, everyone, try to avoid the center of the map. Unless, of course, you are going for the percentages during an alert. If you guys think you can have an easy win around the center of the map, you should go for it. Do not fear the center of the map during an alert, guys, if you think you can have a win in there or you can find a cutoff through the middle of the map. If you've hit a brick wall on the sides, you can always use that as leverage by the end of an alert. But in general, in the beginning of an alert and before the alert even, uh, do not go for the center of the map, guys. You are just stopping the enemy from fighting each other, right? So that's another general tip. Now, the last one that I'm going to give you guys here uh, is another one that's valid for every situation. And you guys probably already heard us talking about this a lot. Uh, and this is avoid population sinks at all costs if you can. Now, what we mean by this is avoid biolabs, avoid containment sites if you have that chance, avoid the central base. So right here on Hossin, for example, if we were going for Aiken Biolab, that is Platoon Waypoint, you would never, under any situation, send your platoon to capture the biolab. Never. Every single biolab, and I welcome you guys to go check the other maps as well. Uh, you can go to any of the other maps that still has biolabs, Emrish or Endar. Every single biolab in the game can be cut off by going around it. The only one that you can't cut off is Ikanam Biolab on Emrish, but that's not a biolab. It's just a biolab in name. The base is completely different from a biolab, uh, and that's the only one that you can't cut off. All of the other biolabs are made to be cut off. You can capture the bases around it and avoid getting into the biolab itself. So that's what you, what you guys should always be doing as a platoon leader. Again, unless you guys are playing off hours, you know, unless you guys are taking your platoon to farm or something like that, in that case, you guys can go ahead and do that. Now, everyone, any questions? Does anyone have any questions about the map, about the facilities, the stuff that I talked about so far? Any questions? Come on, guys. Uh, I do have one decent question. Um, so, I, I'm an original type type player. Um, does the, uh, what am I trying to say here? Does the you still go to like a a, a back tap base and and take out like certain features like in the original planet side you could take out a amp station and it would 
uh, screw over the other uh, teams and make them lose like their uh, armor bonuses, things like that. No, no. In Planet Side Two, the f the larger facilities have no real bonus that they give you. They do have a few bonus, uh, I think, when the continent flips or something like that. But it's nothing relevant. It used to be the case where you could only pull main battle tanks. So in our case, Mag Riders, for example, if you had control over the tech plant. Uh, but it, that's not the case anymore. They removed that a long time ago. Uh, just don't have that anymore. Uh, and look at that, looks like we just started the alert, that's great. So anyone, any other questions? No more questions guys, come on. Uh, okay. I've got, I've got one. Um, Go ahead, Spade. A, during, let's say we're running a platoon or two during an alert, how do you determine lattice you want to push along? To, to maximize, like, uh, territory control. Okay, sounds good. So I'm going to give you a practical example right now, right? Okay. So this is actually what I wanted to do. And if we don't have any more questions, that what's w that's what we are actually going to do. Because this platoon is right now going to turn into kind of an over-explained pl platoon. And I'm going to take you guys through this alert, explain you guys the strategy behind it like I see it. Okay, and we can discuss the strategy of this alert that's happening right now as we fight it. Uh, I might, you know, take a few breaks during an alert. We're not going to take it very seriously. So I don't, I'm not aiming to winning this alert. I'm aiming to over explain it to you guys the strategy that's behind what's going on in this alert. Right? So right now, if we look at the map right here, you can see that we are being pushed very far uh, on both sides. But the TR are clearly the ones pressuring us the most, right? They are very close to our warp gate. They are the ones who started the alert. And on the northern side of the map, if you guys take a look, we are missing our stronghold base. So the, the base that we should hold on our northern side against the TR would be Hade Skydock. So as a platoon, we should try to make it our first objective to go ahead and secure our northern lettuce and have our choke points sorted out, right? So right now, I'm going to send a platoon to Vax Biologics. So platoon waypoint is actual. I want you guys to start the cap on Vax Biologics, and we're going to do it by galaxy. So everyone, let's get into the galaxies here. We are now going to be playing very much like a, a normal platoon, but I'm going to be talking double what I usually say in a platoon, because I'm going to be explaining the strategy step by step as we go ahead and do it. So we're going to be playing, and then you guys can keep your eyes on the map. You know, you don't necessarily need to play. And as the strategy comes by, you guys can go ahead and ask whatever you want about the strategy that we're going through here. 